Monaco, famously known as the wealthiest country on Earth, has reached a critical juncture. It's out of space. The tiny nation, smaller than New York Central Park, has become synonymous with luxury, elegance, and opulence. But with every square meter already packed with luxury developments, there's physically no more room to grow. That's where the incredible Meriterra project comes in. Monaco is creating a brand new district by extending into the Mediterranean Sea, an ambitious 2 billion expansion using cutting-edge eco-conscious building methods and high-end architectural designs. This futuristic new era will offer an elite standard of living while promoting environmental responsibility. To grasp why Monaco needs this bold expansion, we need to take a step back in history. During the 19th century, Monaco was far larger than it is today. But its geographic location, squeezed between France, Italy, and close to Spain, meant it had long been subject to the influence of more dominant European nations. In 1861, a pivot occurred. Prince Charles III signed the first Franco-Monegasque Treaty, a landmark agreement that fundamentally reshaped Monaco's future. Under this deal, Monaco gave up about 90% of its land to France in exchange for 4 million gold francs. While it was a huge territorial loss, it gave Monaco the autonomy to chart its own destiny. Using this financial windfall, Monaco began reinventing itself. It pivoted to luxury tourism, banking on its sun-drenched coastline, and legal gambling, and then outlawed in France to attract the European elite. Over time, Monaco embraced this vision fully, building lavish casinos, top-of-the-hotels, and world-class marinas tailored to billionaires. In 1950, Monaco hosted a race in the inaugural Formula One World Championship, cementing its place in the international sporting camp. Today, the Monaco Grand Prix remains one of the most glamorous events in the F1 calendar. Add in the prestigious Monaco Yacht Show, the Monte Carlo Master Tennis Tournament, Michelin-starred restaurants and high-end fashion boutiques, and you see how Monaco became a global magnet for the wealthy. On top of this, Monaco introduced extremely favorable tax laws. There's no personal income tax, no capital gains tax, and no wealth tax for residents. Corporate tax is minimal, and property tax is only levied on rentals. There are some exceptions, though. The combination of elite lifestyles and tax benefits worked wonders. Monaco now boasts the highest GDP per capita in the world and is home to more millionaires per square meter than anywhere else. But the issue is space. Developers have maximized every building area to keep up with the constant demand for luxury housing. However, Monaco's natural topography is extremely limiting. The country spans just over 2 kilometers square, much of which is mountainous and unsuitable for development. Even with these constraints, over 36,000 people currently call Monaco home, making it the most densely populated nation on Earth. With that number of residents expected to rise in the coming decades, the space crunch is only getting worse. To benefit from Monaco's tax-friendly laws, you must be a resident, which requires either owning or renting property. This has led to sky-high real estate prices, with the average cost per square meter reaching a staggering 50000 about four times the average in Paris. So how does a country with no more room expand? By extending into the sea. Building into the ocean isn't a new idea for Monaco. It's been reclaiming land for over a century. Initially, the focus was on small-scale projects to support infrastructure, like railways, but more ambitious developments followed. The most significant example was the Fontvéville district, created in the 1970s. Using similar engineering principles to Merterra, Monaco added 22 hectares of new land by constructing a perimeter seawall and filling it with millions of tons of rock and gravel. It took a decade to complete, but was successful, eventually housing 10% of Monaco's population. However, Merterra is set to raise the bar even higher. The Merterra project is Monaco's latest and most ambitious effort to address its space issue. The Merterra's project is Monaco's latest and most ambitious effort to address its space issue. Unlike past developments, this six-hectare expansion is being built with sustainability and exclusivity in mind. Every element, from underwater foundations to rooftop gardens, has been meticulously designed. A key feature is its marine eco-design, a revolutionary approach in Monaco. Before construction started, over 500 square meters of seagrass were carefully relocated to protect the underwater ecosystem. Twelve separate marine cleanup operations were carried out, and artificial reefs were built to shelter displaced marine specimens. The building process began with 1.5 million tons of gravel laid on the seabed by a specialized vessel named the Simon Stephen, and much like a 3D printer, it placed each rock with millimeter precision to minimize disruption to marine currents and ecosystems. Once the base was ready, 18 massive concrete caissons, each weighing 10,000 tons, were installed. Their designs included hollow chambers to create habitats for marine life, and the textured surface promotes algae growth. These caissons form a protective seawall and foundation for the new neighborhood. According to the project director Guy Thomas Levy-Susan, the aim was to build homes for people and sea life. 
The dual purpose is what sets Mariterra apart from past reclamation projects. Above water, Mariterra continues its environmentally friendly ethos. Almost half the neighborhood will be dedicated to green space. And also, even the layout is inspired by nature. The development includes a man-made valley that offers a tranquil escape from urban environments, providing both residents and visitors a place to connect with nature. At the heart of Mariterra stands Lorenzo, the flagship structure designed by celebrated architect Renzo Piano. The building's design pays homage to Monaco's heritage as a humble fishing village. Shaped like a massive sailboat on stilts, Lorenzo appears to float, ensuring unobstructed ocean views. The apartments inside are as luxurious as it gets. Each one spans both sides of the building, giving panoramic views of both the sea and city. The smallest units are over 370 meters squared, with only two units per floor. Some buyers even combined multiple units for ultra-spacious homes. But Lorenzo also stays true to Merterra's sustainability mission. It uses seawater for climate control via an advanced thalassothermal loop. This system expects thermal energy from the sea to heat or cool buildings with no harmful impact on marine life. Not only Lorenzo, but the entire Merterra development and even nearby districts benefit from this energy-efficient system. If projections hold, this could cut Monaco's greenhouse gas emissions by up to 7%. As you might expect, buying a property in Merterra doesn't come cheap. Every unit was sold out before completion. Resale listings already show prices soaring to 100000 per square meter. That puts even the smallest apartment in Lorenzo at around $37 million, and the custom-designed villas as high as $300 million. While the numbers are jaw-dropping, they don't seem to deter buyers. Monaco's real estate market surged by 60% over the last decade. Properties here aren't just homes, they're financial assets and status symbols. The $2 billion price tag from Airterra has been entirely funded by private investment. Nine ultra-wealthy families, three from Monaco and six from other parts of Europe, have bankrolled the project. In fact, all residents must be personally approved by developers, highlighting the exclusivity and power behind the scenes. While Mayor Terra's environmental focus is commendable, it's worth noting that the most eco-friendly option might be not to build at all. No comprehensive environmental impact study has been made publicly available, so complete assessments missing. Mayor Terra is more than just a neighborhood, it's a strategic move that helps Monaco maintain its elite status. Still, it invites deeper reflection. Is it sustainable? While it's undeniable that Merterra will shape Monaco's future and the company continues to evolve, one thing is certain, it will do it in style. What do you think? Would you spend tens of millions to live here? Let us know your thoughts, and we'll see you in the next video.